Hey, what's up? This is Mark at Alchemist.camp, where we learn Elixir and Phoenix by building things. Today we're going to build part two of our Phoenix 1.4 chat server application. And as you can see, last time we got Webpack set up and we got it working with SCSS. We're going to get rid of this background color that I threw in just as an example so that we get the normal colors back like this. And now we're going to use the Phoenix generators to create all the CRUD for our users and the user's credentials, both of which will go into an accounts context, and also our chat rooms, which will go into a chat context. So first thing we're going to do is open, actually we'll stop the server, that's probably a better idea, and then we'll mix phoenix.gen.html accounts context user, and the plural of that, the table name is users, Users will have names, which are strings, and they'll have usernames, which are also strings. So they don't need to, we, don't, we could write string like this, but if you don't say what it is, the assumption is that it's a string. Usernames are going to be unique because we may use that in the routes of the app and elsewhere to identify them. All right, we'll have to remember to add that resources user line to our router in a few moments, but first, Let's continue on with our generators. So we have users, and now we're going to make credentials for the users. So it'll still be in the accounts context, and we'll call it credential. This will include things like email, and password. It'll start off just with those, but later on we could extend it to OAuth credentials and other kinds of credentials that uh, users might have. Now notice this generator is phoenix or phx.gen.context. For the user, we used HTML. And the reason for that is we wanted to generate all of the front end functionality, like the templates for showing users or the page for editing them, the forms, all of that. With credentials, since that's actually just more information that's related to a user, we don't want to generate page templates or anything like that. We just want the model here for our database. And the name of the table is credentials, plural. And credentials will start with just email. And email is going to be unique. It's a string since I didn't say what it is. And a password hash, which is also going to be a string. So nothing more required. Then finally, each credential belongs to a user. So user underscore ID references users. And yes, I do want to inject more information into our context for accounts. And notice there's no route to add here since contexts don't have their own route. Now finally, let's make the chat rooms themselves. So mix phoenix.gen and I do want all of the HTML created here. So chat will be the context. Room will be the schema. Rooms is a table name. Each room will have a name, which will be a unique string. And they'll also have a description, which could be longer than 255 characters. So instead of a string, we're going to specify that it's text. And finally, the rooms also reference users, and that's because uh, each room will have a creator, which will be that user ID. So user ID references users. There we go. Now let's add these two lines to our router. So open up router and close the terminal, just so we have a bit more space. I like to put the resources after the uh, specific actions. So resources, rooms, rooms controller, and we also need a user controller and users. And now let's look at what those generators got us. So in our chit chat, which is basically the back end part of the app, we have the, the schemas themselves. So we have a user schema and a credential schema. And we also have a room schema under the chat context. Then the contexts themselves 
have some convenience functions built for us to do things with our context. And the accounts one will have some for both users and for credentials at the bottom. Uh, that's what that warning was about. So let's start with the user and we'll see what needs to be changed in it. So each user has a name and a username. Each user also has one credential. And that credential is just the schema that we just generated. So chit chat dot accounts dot credential. All right, then we'll go on to credential, which is going to take some more changes. So we have an email and a password hash in the schema, as well as the user ID, but we won't ever actually pass a password hash into a credential when we're creating it. Instead, a user will supply a password and a password confirmation, and neither of those should be saved in the database. Instead, we should hash them or encrypt them into a password hash and save that in the database. Then the next time they log in, we take whatever password they fed in. We do not save it, but we run it through the same encryption algorithm and make sure that it matches the hashed password we have in the database. To do all of this, we'll create a virtual field. So virtual true that's called password. This is a password that the user enters. It's never saved in the database, but it is part of the schema. And we'll make another one just like it for password hash. Then we'll have two kinds of change sets. One will be if the user gives a password and a password confirmation, and the other will be if they don't, and we're not changing the password. The one called change set is going to be for when we don't supply a password. So I'm going to remove this requirement of the password hash and also add a requirement on the email and just validate the format. Make sure that it has an at sign. So we're not actually going to know if it's a valid email until the user responds to an email, but this way we can just prevent a, a complete typo where maybe they put their username in the email field. Save that. And we'll make a registration change set for when someone is either registering a new account or changing their password. And we'll call that registration change set. And it's going to take a struct and it's also going to take attributes. And if no attributes are passed in, it's just going to assume blank attributes. And in the body of this, it's going to look a lot like the previous one did. We'll start off with a struct. Uh, we'll generate a change set from the attributes. And we scroll down here, just to get some more space. And we'll cast, and what, whatever's in cast is just the attributes that you pay attention to as inputs. This is so if someone inputs something we don't want to be accessible from the outside, it will just be completely ignored. We're going to look at password and password hash, or password confirmation. Did I call that confirmation or should be? Oh, I, I didn't, this should be password confirmation. Password confirmation. And we're going to require these same two so I'll go back here, change cast to validate required. Then we're going to validate the length of the password. Just make sure it's at least eight characters long. Obviously there are a lot of other validations you can do to prevent weak passwords and it's probably a good idea. Validate length and length takes a password key or takes the key of the field, which is password and then min eight is an option we can pass into it. Say it must be at least eight characters long and validate confirmation. Validate confirmation just checks that two fields are the same. So password and password underscore confirmation is assumed by the function. And finally, we need to hash the password.
let's go over what we have so far. The change set is just for changing a credential and not changing the password. At this point, that means the only thing we're looking at is email. And we also validate or we require that that email exists, that it has an at sign in it, and that there is only one credential with the same email. And then the registration change set is similar, but note that the very first thing it does is it calls the change set. So it will do everything the change set does, and then in addition, it will uh, check for password and password confirmation. It will actually require that they're there. It will require the password is at least eight characters long. It will require that they're the same. The password and the password confirmation are the same. And then it will hash the password. Now at any point, one of these validations could fail and it will still return a change set and pass that on to the next function of the pipeline. But that change set will have a valid attribute set to false and it will have uh, an, an errors array as well. So let's handle that situation when we get to hash password. The hash password function we make will have two function heads. One will be if that valid flag is set to false. So hash password valid question mark false. So this, this function head will only match if we pass in a change set uh, or something, at least with a valid false flag, and change that. And when that happens, we just pass the change set along. So uh, what'll end up being spit out the end will be a change set with an error in it. Then if it is valid, password, uh, is a valid flag will be true. And if somehow we have something in here that doesn't have a valid flag, that's gonna throw an error because nothing will match. And that should throw an error because that would mean we had a typo or uh, an out of date library, something very strange happening. And this change set will also have a changes field. And inside the changes, we've got password, and we're going to store whatever that matches as, as pass. So that's the password that the user has entered and it must have been confirmed or else we wouldn't get through the registration change set. And in the body, it's pretty simple. We'll put change, which just puts a change into the change set. Put change, change set, and password hash. That password hash is going to be the output of our hash password salting function. And this we're definitely not going to roll on our own. We're going to use an award winning library called Argon2. And it has a hash password salt function. We'll pass the password in. So we've got the password from the user. We pass that into this function. This function encrypts the password and then we put that encrypted password in the field password hash and the virtual fields password and password confirmation never get saved now in order to use that uh, that password hashing function we've got to alias come on in dot argon2 now, come on in isn't installed by default in a Phoenix app, but it is the standard uh, password hashing library that, that uh, Phoenix apps use. So we've got to go to our mix file at the top level of our app and add that dependency. So it's called come on in. Current version is version four point something. So we get 4.0. And come on in used to include all the password hashers inside of it, but now they've modularized it. So we also need to get argon2 elixir. And that is version 1.2. Save that, we'll get those dependencies. Let's 
Phoenix Ecto 3.5.0 is retired. So this changed yesterday, I guess. 3.6. And there we go. And back to our credential file. Let's see. All of this looks pretty good, except that we want a belongs to relationship. So belongs to user. And user that it belongs to is going to be chitchat.accounts.user. Similarly, in our user, each user has one credential. All right, on to chat, uh, on to room. Okay, they have a description, which is a string. And let's check the migrations. Just make sure that it really is a text. So it's priv, repo, migrations, description, text. Okay, everything looks fine there. So let's continue on to the accounts context. The chat context really doesn't need to be changed at all at this point. The default functions are fine. The accounts, we do have a bit more to do just because of the connection between credentials and users. First of all, let's alias credentials right at the top, credential, as well as the user. This uh, the syntax here will just get chitchat.accounts.credential and chitchat.accounts.user. Then we also need to import a helper from come on in. Come on in. And that's going to be our check password as well as a dummy check password. If we just write import come on in.argon2, that will make it so that we can run any function inside the library without typing argon2 before it. We don't want to do that though, because that's bringing in way too much. So we'll use only, which is usually a good idea anytime you've got import. Check password to argument function and dummy check password, which is a zero argument function. Check password actually checks if a password is right. Dummy check password just uses up an equivalent amount of time as if it were checking for a password because encrypting, decrypting passwords takes time. List users is pretty much what we want. Get user, we're going to make a multi-line function. So get rid of that and add an end. After we get the user, we're going to preload its credential into it. Repo.preload. And that's because most times you get a single user, you also want to have that user's email address and so forth as well. When you're getting them all, you may not want that information. Preload credential. And that's all we need to change there. Create user needs a bit of a change. Since a user change that doesn't create a credential on its own, we've got to add that in here. It's ecto change set dot cast ASOC and this just says it's got an association in it credential and then we need to give it a function and that function is credential dot change set or dot registration change set and we need the slash two because it's an anonymous function and we've got to specify the arity of it. And then repo insert. And then in update user, we've got two paths we'll have to handle. One is if the user enters a password and a password confirmation and they want to change their password. The other is if they don't want to change their password, in which case it would be annoying to have to type it in twice. So in the first case, we'll use a credential registration change set. In the second case, we'll just use the normal change set. We'll figure out which needs to be used and save that in a variable above to make things a bit simpler. We'll just call this cred change set and use a boolean here to figure out which one we want. So if ATTRs credential and 
and password. So if there is a credential in the attributes and inside of that is a password and that password is an empty string, then we're just going to use the normal change set. So credential dot change set slash two, because we have to say um, the number of arguments. That's actually part of the function's name. And else credential dot registration change set parity two. Now that we know which change set we're going to use, it's just the same uh, cast ASOC that we used above. So ecto dot capital change set dot cast ASOC and takes the arguments credential and with the change set that we've stored in the variable above. So this line will just use the appropriate change set. You might wonder what if there is no credential in there at all? Shouldn't that also be using the, uh, the change set instead of the registration change set? The answer to that is if there's no credential at all, then Ecto won't do anything to it when we cast ASOC and uh, we won't update the password. And we'll leave the helpers for credentials as they are in this file so that the only way to change somebody's password is if they go through this update user and uh, there is a password supplied and it passes all the requirements in the registration change set for credential. With that done, let's run mix and make sure that our app is working okay. Unused import come on in dot argon two. And that's because we haven't done authentication yet. So that is okay. And we pretty much have everything we need in order to actually create users through the web interface. So let's just finish that up. Inside to chat web, we've got a controller made for users. We don't really need to change anything in this user controller. Just the defaults will work fine. The one thing we will have to change though is our form. So notice this new.html template we use in our, our create and our new actions. And then this edit.html template that we use in edit and update. Both of those templates include a form. So new is here. It doesn't really do much except to render a form and edit is here. It renders that same form. We'll look inside the form. We have a label for the name, an input for the name, and the same for username. We need to add a section here to handle the credential because the generators obviously had no way of knowing that we would link credentials in the way that we did. So here's what we'll do. Make a div called form group. And inside this div, we'll make inputs for the credentials. So that's a function called inputs for and f here just means the form itself. Notice this label f input, text input f, all of this is just the form. And this will be the credential, which is a struct that's embedded in the user. That's how we set it up. And we'll call the credential form cf. We'll have a bunch of stuff and then we will end this embedded form. So, so what we need is basically the same structure as what we already have up here. So I'm just gonna copy that with shift alt down, which is a shortcut to Visual Studio Code, and indent that in to match. Now, of course, this label and this text input and this error tag all have to be CF, because that's our, our inner form, the credential form. And instead of username, the first part is going to be email. And then we're gonna copy this down two more times to make our password and our password confirmation. And that should be all it takes. Let's uh, fire up the app and have a look. IEX-S mix Phoenix server. The IEX.S will just make it interactive so that we can poke at things from the terminal. All 
right and go to users and undefined table relation users does not exist uh oh oh i don't think i've even migrated yet mix ecto dot migrate pretty much anytime you generate something with a control with a generator you've got to do a migration and let's try that again there we go so we create a new user hopefully i'll just be myself here mark and username alchemist email alchemist.camp at gmail.com password will be ASDF ASDF and these should be password inputs ASDF ASDF very good validate required three expects names to be Adams got email alchemist camp okay and that was Credential line 29. So that's where we'll look. Credential. Uh, we don't need the terminal open. Line 29. Date required attributes. That. But this is wrong. That's JavaScript syntax. Double backslash will uh, get you uh, a default parameter. I don't think that's a problem though. Oh, okay. So we don't need to pass attributes into required. The validations just take, or validate required just takes a list of which things are required. Save that and try resubmitting the form. All right, we have a user. Uh, let's see if we can make another one. New user. Uh, this one is going to be foo, username foo, email test at well, foo at example.com, and password will be lkj, lkj, lkj. All right. Excellent. Okay, now let's have a look in our terminal and try some of these helpers we made in accounts. We'll alias chitchat.accounts and accounts.listusers. Very good. We've got a couple of them. We did not load the credentials. Now let's try accounts.getuser. This should preload the credential. We'll get the first user, and it's me. And there is a credential with the email in it. And how about list credentials? All right, so we have our basic CRUD set up for users and credentials. And we also do for chat rooms, I believe. Rooms, new room. We'll call this general. This is for chatting about stuff in general. Very good. This is a decent start. We've got users and chat rooms and credentials are associated with users. We've made all those schemas in the database. We've made helpers so that we can work with them from the terminal and we've dealt with password hashing and all of that. And we've also made it so that we can work with it through a web interface pretty, uh, pretty simply. Like we don't have to do a whole lot in order to create a new user, or in fact, we can edit users and we've, we've made it convenient enough that uh, we could actually make changes that don't touch the password and, and a separate method for dealing with actual changes to the password. Next episode, we are going to build out logins with basic authentication so that user can use those passwords to log in and then store that in a session. We'll also set it up so that 
whoever is logged in and creates a room will be that room's administrator or its owner. And we can set up some more permissions around who can see what and who can do what. And then it will be onto the channels. Till next time, code on.